well, Jesus should be careful about telling parables if he doesn't want me to mess around with it and, and dig deep for possible meaning. I mean, that's what parables all are all about, right? So I've been um, trying to tease meaning out of this parable the last couple of weeks, praying about it. And it, it took me forever, something that maybe is obvious to some of you. But I finally realized that I didn't need to be confined in, um, to size when thinking about the parable of the mustard seed. It's not just about size. Well, with the mustard seed, it is. But the kingdom of God is like the mustard seed, which is the proverbial tiny seed, and it becomes the biggest of shrubs and provides shade for, um, for birds. And the way the first reading puts it, provides a place for all kinds, every kind of bird. And obviously, we're not just talking about birds, too. So we're not just talking about mustard seeds. And I'm thinking, it's not just about something tiny becoming big, but this parable could be about anything that is embarrassingly unpromising. Not just embarrassingly small, but just embarrassingly unpromising. And, um, and then, somehow, um, become surprisingly... Um, um, helpful and surprisingly um, fruitful, surprisingly um, it has surprising potential that is somehow reached. And that it's something helpful, you know, it provides shade, it provides branches, and for many people um, or birds, and the big kicker is that um, God does it all, right? God does all the work. Um, the, the sower of seeds just scatters the seeds and goes to sleep. Now you tell a farmer that, and he or she might disagree, but, but God is doing the, the um, main work here. I got to thinking about, for example, um, graduates. Now, how many of you here are new graduates? You know what? Can you raise your hands again? So think back, yes, yes. Think back to um, four, five, ten years ago, um, and um, you probably didn't have a ton of confidence in your ability to pull this off, right? Um, you know, oh my God, here I am at this huge place. You know, I'll just walk in. And that's all you needed to do, walk in. You didn't, haven't done anything else, right? Slept a lot. But, um, but, but, but God has done so much in you and now has brought you to this time of um, fruition, of graduation. You've done plenty of work along the way, but as you look at where you are now, don't you suspect that you couldn't have done this on your own? God, through other people, through professors, through support of whomever, hopefully of this community, um, has brought you to this place. I'm thinking as well about... Um, um, any small acts that we do, or I, again, I don't want to get into size, but maybe things that we think are unpromising. Um, haven't you, you know, done small, some small act of kindness before and thought, well, I don't know if it'll be received. Reached out to somebody in forgiveness and thought, I don't know, it's maybe going to fall flat. Who knows? Um, um, tried something new. Can you think of anything else? Any, any uh, uh, unpromising acts? Anybody? You probably do them all the time, huh? And then um, they flourish somehow. Some do, some don't. I'm also thinking about this community as we, I can't wait to celebrate the 50th, which we're 
officially starting with our welcome mass in the fall. But um, I wanted to ask this. So how many of you, um, I see Father Ernie here, how many of you have been here uh, since sometime in the 60s, been part of this community? I've been... <laughs> yeah. So if you've already raised your hand, don't raise your hand for this. How many have been here since the 70s? Wow, you <laughs> since you were born, huh, James? <laughs> yeah. Okay, how many um, haven't raised your hand yet and have been here since the 80s? Wow. 90s? The aughts? Well, here and then back again for me. And then um, the rest, maybe especially um, people who just graduated, maybe 2011, a lot of you came. And um, you just never know um, where this is going to go. In fact, when Father Ernie told a brief history of this community to um, our planning committee for the 50th anniversary celebration, he said when, um, um, when he first got here, he thought, oh gosh, there's only you know, very few students, and it just didn't seem like a very promising venture. Did they really belong here? And he just put one step forward, right? Um, Father McCulloch was here with you right at the beginning, right? And who else was here, like, any, any of you else other here, like in the first year here? Yeah, but soon, but soon after, because this was 66, okay, yeah. And um, you put one step forward, and then you didn't know where it was going to lead, even literally, geographically, where it was going to lead, where the community was going to be and thrive. And again, I'm, not, I'm trying to get away from just size here. You know, um, nobody could have imagined all the fruits of, of this. And even to get away from quantity, all the power that would come from this venture that those first steps. But God has been with this community all along the way, right? Bringing things out of it that nobody would have ever imagined. And then what's to come in the next 50 years? Who knows? Who knows? The second reading today says, um, we walk by faith, not by sight. And so all of these things I've been talking about today um, our matter of faith, we, we come to UCSV, start a new community, start study, um, extend our hands to somebody in need, and it's an act of faith knowing that we can't bring that to fruition on our own, trusting that God will do it. And, and then the next day or the next moment, we do it again, we take another step. And so it's patience as well is involved, right? We walk by faith. The ultimate um, example of this unpromising beginning becoming amazingly, surprisingly fruitful is Jesus' life, Jesus' death on the cross out of death, God brings life. So our whole way of being Christians, our whole way of following Christ is about um, unpromising beginnings, unpromising steps, unpromising actions, but trusting that God will bring about the more and more we practice faith, not so much surprising results, but tremendous results, but more and more we can maybe learn to expect these kind of tremendous results. That's part of faith. We do this, God, we expect you while we sleep and study a little bit and pray and do what little we can to extend our hands to one another. We expect God that you will do great things, even if we'll never be aware of those great things, even if we won't think they're great things. God, you will do great things. 